I can tell from miles away if your editing is a beginner, intermediate, or too cool. There are three things that can identify if your editing is not very advanced. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can solve them. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Simone and I'm a professional photo videographer. And on this channel, we explore strategies and tools to improve our photography business and productivity. Let me just start saying that I'm giving away my Noble preset pack for free to everyone as a huge thank you because I reached already 90K actually and 500K on TikTok. So this is my kind of thank you for you all. You can access through the link in bio and is free for all my YouTube subscribers. You just need to subscribe to YouTube, take a screenshot and upload that screenshot on the web page on this link or link also in the description and then you're gonna receive the full pack for free. All right, let me just say that I'm going to show you how you can solve this problem using Lightroom Desktop but you can do the same exact thing using Lightroom Mobile. If you don't have Lightroom Mobile, you should definitely download it because it's the best app for taking photos and editing photos on a mobile and it's completely free. There is a premium version but you don't need it. All right, so the first mistake that you want to avoid avoid absolutely is moving the orange slider of colors when you're editing any image that contains people. And why I'm telling you this is because the skin color is orange 99% of the times and therefore you want to avoid moving that slightest light or left because it's going to change the skin color in a very unnatural way. So just don't do it. And let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm now in Lightroom and then I want to show you that any kind of movement in the orange color slider it just is gonna affect so badly my skin color. And many times I've received photos uh, from Instagram of people asking me, how's the edit? Just rate my edit. And then they are like this. So the skin color is this color. And as you can see, this is absolutely not okay. And this is a classic beginner mistake that I was doing as well. So just try instead to leave it there. And the maximum thing that you could do is to move the saturation if you want to have a little bit more colors on your skin and eventually the luminance. Don't touch the hue slider. For example, I'm now looking at my Epi preset pack, all the presets that I have, and then I'll leave you down in the description below if you want to check them out. And for example, we can use, um, I like this quite a lot, but then what we need to do is just increase the exposure here on the subject, which is me. Let me try to do this. There you go, that sounds nice. And then maybe we can increase the shadows in this image. And there you go, and this looks pretty good. Eventually I can even create a uh, sun flare coming from this side and increase, there you go. And this doesn't look bad, that's it, before and after. As you can see, the orange slider is slightly moved. That's it, plus six, nothing more than that. If I would do this, I would look like Hulk, right? So just don't move the orange slider. Okay, the second thing that you want to avoid, actually that you want to try, is to always, always, always desaturate the colors. Might sound weird to you, but every single time beginners, and I was exactly the same, tend to oversaturate all the photos and bump up that saturation, that vibrance like crazy. Just don't do it. Actually, I give you a challenge. If you're a beginner, try to do this. Always, 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 only desaturate colors a tiny bit, color by color, instead of saturate them. So the maximum that you can go is plus five on saturation out of a 100 scale. All the photo, the dramatic looks that you see on Instagram, 99% are made by desaturating all the colors. Now, with time, you're gonna train your eye and you're gonna learn when you'll be able to saturate some color. Most of the time in my pictures, the most that I do is saturate one single color and never more than one. So let's have a look at some examples. In this photo, what I want to do is to try to make it look a little bit better, a little bit more dramatic. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the blues. So for example, right here, I'm gonna move and play around with the slider. And here seems way, way, way too much saturated for my kind of advanced eye. So what I'm gonna do is just decrease the saturation and look at the colors, look at that dramatic feeling. It's just amazing, right? And then I can play around with the yellow, which is the color of the building. And I'm gonna put it maybe towards the magenta right here towards the orange and then I'm gonna decrease and remove that orange that is too strong for my light. And then maybe decrease a tiny bit the luminance on this and then I'm gonna act with the green which are the last one that are here. Look what happens when I'm gonna move the green towards the yellow the color just look much better than before. I totally don't like this 
Maybe you can like it, it could be a mood, but then I prefer to move it towards the green and desaturate all the greens. And this is really much better than before, in my opinion, before and after. And also I bumped up a little bit the shadows right here and the white. Let's have a look at this one. Even here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna stay in the colors tab and then I'm gonna start with the blues and start desaturate them like so, there you go. Maybe decrease, yeah, even more the saturation. Look at this ladder, I'm minus 82 of saturation. And then I'm gonna pick the yellows and play around with these, maybe desaturate them and decrease the luminance as well and the orange are gonna do the exact same thing. Even here, actually I want to do more, more, more in the blues. Yeah, there you go, much more dramatic and then eventually I can keep going with the editing. Yeah, there you go and then decrease this part, texture and exposure. Yeah, so it can draw the attention more towards this as the building and we're gonna do the same thing with the sides. There you go, and then on the other side as well. Very nice, and then we can add kind of like a sun flare coming from the top and see how that looks. Yeah. That looks pretty good and is already much better than before, right? And I did a very, very few adjustments. And the third tip is to avoid pushing the clarity like crazy. This is another huge beginner's mistake because every time when we start out with photography, we just take that slider and put a maximum because it seems that it looks good, but actually it isn't. So as a rule of thumb, never, never, never put the clarity and the texture higher than 20. So let's have a look at some examples. So in this photo, the temptation of a beginner is just to push the clarity like so, because it seems like punchy. It seems like, yeah, there's a lot of detail. There are a lot of structure, but actually I can see that this is a huge mistake. Eventually what I can do is maybe I can push it towards maybe 15 and that looks fine. And then eventually I can draw a rigid filter on this little rabbit right here and increase the exposure. There you go. And also on the men's face, increase a tiny bit the exposure. Very good. And then you can increase the shadows to see more people, exposure, there you go. And then a couple of uh, filters, yeah, like so, there you go. And then we're gonna touch up the colors a tiny bit. Yeah, desaturate them, of course. Play around with the yellow, see what it does. Okay, I like this, desaturate them. And this is already so much better than before. Let's have a look at another example. Now I wanna see if there is any preset of mine that works good with this. And this one looks amazing, gray mood. And in this case, we have bumped up the clarity quite a bit 38, but I think is a bit too much for this photo. So I'm gonna drag it down and go negative. This is because I want that dreamy looking uh, with the sun rays that are coming in. And even here, we just need to drag up the exposure and there you go. This is a fantastic photo, I love it. Before and after. Last example in this case, even here, the temptation, you just bring the clarity slider and boom, put it 100 because it seems more detailed, seems more punchy, but actually it isn't. It's a, just a mistake and I can see already that it's not a great edit. So what I'm gonna do is maybe leave it plus 17, but let's see even here if there is any kind of preset that works. Yeah, I like this Indonesia preset and here as you can see the clarity is minus 24. Now for this photo maybe I want to bump it up again a little bit and then maybe take a radial filter and then eventually to just bump up the clarity on one single part of the image and not the whole image. So in this case I want to highlight the Hunke Fachoi the Happy New Year of the Chinese Happy New Year here and therefore when I'm gonna put the clarity is just right here but not on the overall image. Even here we can add a kind of a sun reflection like so here, we increase the exposure quite a bit, temperature and this looks pretty good. Increase the feather and we're good. That's it, before and after. Huge difference, right? Just the preset a tiny bit clarity in one single part of the image, but not in the overall image. All right guys, so remember when you're starting out with photography, if you're a beginner or intermediate and you want to learn how to edit like a pro, never touch up the hue of the oranges when you are editing people. Always try to desaturate the colors, except maybe one only at max. And third one, don't go too crazy with the clarity and the texture. Instead, go between plus 20 and minus 20. My Lightroom crash course and mobile photography course are packed of these tips and tricks on how to 
edit your photos and you can access them both for free for 14 days. I'll leave you down in the description below if you want to check them out. Also, I just want to remind you that I'm giving out for free my Noble preset pack that contains five unique mobile presets that will help you step up your photography and you can get them completely for free. You just need to subscribe to YouTube channel, upload a screenshot in this link and it's also in the description as well and you're going to receive the pack for free. If you have some spare time and want to check another cool video, I leave you here 10 tips to improve your mobile photography. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.